Oh, it can't. That or one from the other day, is it? That elk's really far off. Is that the cow? I can't tell. Or is that it? That's not him bugling though. No. I thought maybe he's just heading to the mother elk. seeing if we can find some uh, some oaks that are actually dropping we've been bumping a bunch of dough so we're just gonna move up here onto the sand hills here see if we can find a, an oak tree that's dropping acorns and uh, see if we get lucky So I found some super fresh sign. I'm in these sand hills and there's like, there's no water, no food. And I just found a uh, small pocket of oaks and they're actually dropping acorns. Piles and piles of fresh droppings. Two big rubs, some bedding area. So definitely gonna put this on my list for mornings. And then that other spot where I've been seeing the bucks in the evening would be my evening spot. We've logged probably close to six miles today just to find this one spot of fresh sign. So hard work pays off. If we don't tag anything tonight um, up there where we've been hunting, I'm super excited to come back here in the morning. So you can see the trails. I mean, it's like a cattle path. And right over the hill is where those fresh oaks are. So it's probably gonna be a couple miles to get in here, but you can see where they're traveling. And then I'm hoping that this path leads me to a water source.
Well, you probably can tell I'm back at the same spot. This is night three here. We've been seeing multiple buck every night, just haven't really been able to, to get close enough for a shot. So we're back at it. The wind has shifted though. The last three days, it's been out of the north northwest. Tonight, it's out of the southeast. Today, it actually shifted. So this morning, it was out of the west and out of the north. And about an hour and a half ago, it shifted out of the south, and then it's switching from the south to the southeast. So I don't know if the deer have gotten up and moved or if they're still in their original bedding location based off of a west-northwest wind. It's hot today. Um, it's in the high 80s. So this is the hottest it's been since we've been out here in North Dakota. So I really don't know what's gonna happen. Um, I'm just gonna drop down into the slough and uh, just kind of play the wind from there. Ideally, I like to kind of get to where I was last night and maybe push a little bit further to the west because um, two nights in a row now we've seen the larger of the buck uh, working the top of that bean field and that would put me in position. Last night I was 100 yards. Um, if I close another 50, I should be in the game. So we'll see what happens. So the last two nights, I came right along this edge of the beans. I have one little cubby made there. I have one here. And then down there is the slough. They come up out of that slough as well, but I'll never really see them until they're right here. There's a little bit of a lip right here. Way out there is where I was two nights ago. And then last night I was just past that little bush. That's where I was going to go tonight, but I decided to push into this little circle. So this bush that I'm in is completely surrounded by just open meadow. Deer should be coming this way. Wind is going that way. This buck comes within 50 yards of Derek, but he's not able to get a shot. This was the third group of bucks that I noticed just while walking out to the truck. All right, well, last night's video ended kind of abruptly with no exit interview. A um, couple reasons. I was sneaking out the, at the tree where I was two nights ago. There were four bucks sitting right there. So I had to kind of go down, drop in the coolie, and work my way out. I didn't know that by doing that, I ended up dropping my cell phone. Didn't realize it until I was back to the truck, which then led into a whole other ordeal of trying to get back in there um, and finding it. So we did. We ended up finding it, thank God. But uh, Derek had that real tall tine uh, 10 point. I got a real small clip of it there on the, on the video. It came within 50 yards of him, but he wasn't able to get a shot. We decided to sleep in this morning. We've been uh, getting pretty worn down being uh, at it every day. So we charged the batteries, recharged the batteries. We're back out here this morning. It's about 10.30. Um, we're on this little coolie drainage system up on the Canadian border. We just kind of wind bump it, see if anything comes out of it. Maybe run some errands and then get back at it tonight. All right, so this little drainage system here just kind of goes up through these little clusters. These little clusters of bushes. Just gonna kind of work my way up around. Derek is up there doing the same thing in another drainage that meets together up here, which is actually the Canadian border. So, we'll see what happens.
this cluster here highlighted is where I'm headed, and it's where I was two nights prior, and last night where I filmed those deer moving up over the beans. So here's a closer look to where I'm headed, but unfortunately you have to cross these cattails. And that has become the hardest part of gaining access to ideal locations since all the mature buck have been bedding in these cattails but you never know exactly where they are. These cattails were over six foot tall and with a deer in them you had no idea where they were going to come out. in here at it again. This is where I was two nights ago when I had that little buck 10 feet from me. And then the real big one and two other ones came in here to my left along the edge of the soybeans. Last night I pushed past here and went about 75 yards further that direction anticipating the big buck were going to move this way again and I would be closer to him. Well the big buck crossed the slough behind me and came up into the field behind the camera and never worked this direction. When I was walking out, there were four buck right here to my right, which would have been about 15 yards from this spot. And there was a bunch more deer working the edge of the soybeans back off to my right. Now the wind's slightly different tonight, um, but we did bump a really big buck coming in and he ran across the beans. So pretty sure he won't be coming back in here tonight. And we also kicked a doe back closer to where we parked. Depending on what happens tonight, we may give this spot a break for the next two nights and then come back towards the end of our, it's what, it's Monday. So if we give it Tuesday and Wednesday, that would leave us Thursday evening yet before we head home on Friday. Um, I did find those fresh oaks over on a different piece of public, a huge piece of public. Um, I think we're going to go in there tomorrow morning, so... It's uh, 3.50, it's hot today, it's in the 80s again. It's overcast though, this is the first day that we've had overcast weather. Hopefully the deer move a little bit earlier. Last night they didn't really start moving until almost eight o'clock. Um, sunset's at 8.20, you can only hunt till 8.50. So we'll see what happens.
that's one of the bigger ones. I think it's like number two or number three for the largest ones that we've seen in here. That bush he came out of is where Derek was gonna go tonight. I'm assuming he's not in there. That other buck is still back over my shoulder. He really hasn't moved at all. But, I mean, this place is crazy. The bucks just pop up out of everywhere. No rhyme or reason. Different wind directions. Different conditions. They just, there's so many places for them to bed. It's so hard to figure it out. So, hopefully Derek's over there somewhere. That big boy will wander down his way. Right now, I gotta hope that either that one comes in or something still comes from the west. The problem with the west is until the sun sets, I can't see. So, wait it out here and see what happens. Just as the sun set, I noticed movement to my left. Yeah. I think when I left off uh, my last video clip was the little six point. He came back in for a third time. Um, <laughs> I was really debating on letting an arrow fly, uh, but left him pass. He came by, started working up the soybean field. And then uh, I looked to my left where I was expecting a big one to come out. Didn't see anything, sat back down. Less than a minute later, I caught moving off to, the, to my left. All I saw was antlers. He was about 10 yards away. He's cutting at me. Cut, across at like a 45 degree angle moving at a decent clip um so i got the full draw left a grunt and uh not being able to judge distance shot i think had to go over his back i looked at the video i broke it down in slow-mo there for a period of time i thought maybe i hit him Derek came over we looked for blood couldn't find the arrow and then when it got dark uh, we were able to locate the arrow and it was clean so it was a, a clean mess it happens um, and then, uh, Derek, yeah, you, uh, you saw some deer too, didn't you? Yep. <laughs> just, just leave it at that, right? Yep. <laughs> saw some deer. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, Derek uh, may or may not have missed as well. Um, and you couldn't range yours because he would have seen you, right? Yeah, no way. Yeah. So, we're learning. Um, Derek and I were talking about it on the way out. You know, obviously we're both pretty bummed. But, uh, just getting that opportunity, you know, driving 24 hours for Derek, 29 hours for me, cross country, learning a new piece of property and getting on, you know, mature bucks like that. And I, I'm going to chalk that up as a success, um, and not beat myself up too much over the mess. And, uh, we'll be back at it tomorrow.